Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Helen and today I have a class that you can do body weight if you like, but if you want, you can add in a set of your favorite ankle weights. I just really recommend that you grab light ones if you have options because we're doing lots of reps and I want you to make it all the way through. We're doing a lot of glute strength, a lot of deep core strength and it's a fun one. So would love to know what you think of class. Please like and subscribe and drop a comment below the video so that I know that you took this class. And remember that there's more where this came from on Helen Thielen Studio, over 400 of these types of workouts. So if you click the link in the description below, you can also get access to your free 10 day, 10 day trial there. Have fun. Hello and welcome back to Helen Thielen Studio. Today we're using the optional wrist, uh, wrist weights, ankle weights, we're putting them on our ankles. And we're gonna get started laying on our backs. You can go ahead and get right into your neutral spine if you're already set up with your ankle weights. And here we go. Find your tabletop position with your knees directly on top of your hips and your ribs melting down and into the floor. We're gonna take your hands behind your head Legs will hang tight in your tabletop position to get you started. And as you exhale, you'll curl your head and chest up. Try to get your shoulder blades to clear the floor so you feel this curl coming from the upper abdominal area and not just from the neck. Exhale out through the mouth as you curl up. And then inhale down through the nose as you place your head down. We'll take about three more just simple with the curl. If you'd like to keep your feet on the floor, that's also totally fine. Last two. We're gonna start to layer in a leg reach. So I'll take my right leg, curl up, stretch that right leg out in front of you. The lower it goes to the floor, the more challenging it's gonna feel. So you wanna make sure that you're able to maintain your neutral pelvis as you continue reaching one leg at a time. Inhale, as we bring it back in. And exhale as we press it out. Let's take that just a few more times. We're here for two. And one. Now we're going to start to continue that same action. Ooh, can't talk today. You're going to curl up. Give me one open and close. Bring it back in. Curl up. One open and close. Bring it back in just like that. Adding on an abduction of the leg, trying to keep the hips really level. Sinking that movement to your breath. We'll take that two more times. Feel the obliques wrapping towards center, the transverse abdominus wrapping towards center. This next one is our last one. We hold the curl, but you're gonna keep going with that out and in of the leg. Try to squeeze and lift your pelvic floor as you squeeze that inner thigh back into your center. Four. Three. Two. Hold on this last one. The legs don't move unless you need to put that leg on the floor for support, but twist towards your bent knee and back to center. Exhale, twist to the bent knee, back to the middle. Let your head fall heavy in your hands. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, curl, curl, curl. For four. Three. Two. One. Last layer here. Hold your curl. Take your left leg, reach it straight. Fold it back in. Try to keep your left armpit off the ground. Reach those legs a little higher for more support if you need it. Feel the abs wrap inward as you extend the leg. We're here for three. Two. Last one, hold it and melt it down. Take a few deep breaths. Just let your head look from right to left, nice and soft at the neck. One last deep breath. Hang tight there for a second. I'm just gonna fix my light. I feel like it's a little bit dark in here. And that should light me up a bit more. Okay, cool. We're gonna go right into that second side. So back into that same position. Let's go back to our curls, finding your tabletop legs. Just a few curls to get situated. Exhale, curl up, shoulder blades off the ground. 
Inhale, back, back down to the floor and repeat. So we're gonna do this whole series that you've just done on the second leg. Starting to feel a little bit of heat, a little bit of soreness maybe in those upper abdominals with each of these curls, but your neck should still be fairly happy because your head is resting. In fact, pushing into your hands as you're curling up so that there's no tension there. Last one here, we're gonna layer in through our left leg, opposite leg extends, and set it back down. Exhale, reach out like someone's pulling on your ankle towards that front of the room. Should help with that stickiness that we often feel in the hip flexors, but just a little friendly reminder, it's good to feel our hip flexors working. We don't want them overworking to the point where we can no longer do the exercise, but we want our hip flexors to get strong just as much as our abs. Let's go two here before we start to layer in that open close. So the left leg will now open and then bring it back in. Curl up. Think about pushing your head downward even as you lift at the chest. So it's really cradled in the hands. And if you still can't get out of any tension in the neck, you're also welcome to just keep your head on the floor. Just a few more of these, then we're gonna go with just the leg out and in, maintaining our curl in two. We curl up, we stay up, sweep open, sweep close. Inhale wide, exhale narrow, inhale wide, exhale narrow. Can you lift your chest up a little higher? Three. Don't drop it yet unless you need more support with that left leg. Option to place that left leg on the ground as you twist and come back to the center. Twist towards that bent knee, back to the center. Oh my goodness. Twist and center. Four. Three, make sure both butts are on the ground. Two, hold your twist, extend both legs. Fold it in. Extend both legs, fold it in. Try not to squeeze your butt here. Feel it in your core instead. Try to get deeper in that curl of the upper body. Give me one more. And relax it down. Knees can be bent. Just let them gently sweep from side to side. Loosen up your low back. And I want to play with a double leg variation of what we just did. So we're going to find our tabletop again. Maybe a massage on your abs. We'll give them a stretch at the end here. Tabletop the legs. Just the curl. Right back to the beginning. Simple, simple curl. Relaxing it back down. Exhale, curl. Inhale down. I just had like a, a flashback to dance teachers saying simple pimple, which is so disgusting when you think about it, but simple curls. Last three. Shoulder blades off the ground. Two, we're gonna start to curl and reach both legs. Holding your curl, reaching both legs straight, folding the knees in. Reaching both legs straight, folding the knees in. Remember, especially if you're using ankle weights like me, maybe experiment with going a little bit higher for more support and only taking it this low as long as you're able to keep your pelvis in neutral. So if you're getting yanked forward and putting all that pressure in the back, I'd rather see high legs and strong center then low legs and compensation there. Let's go three more with these leg reaches, and then it's open clothes. Reach the legs out, separate them, squeeze them back in, fold the knees. Reach them open, fold them back in. Reach, try to feel like someone's gently pulling your legs out in front of you. If you've ever done that stretch where someone just gently pulls on your legs as they place them down, the best stretch. Three, we're gonna hit just the open close. And two, oh my goodness. One, just the open close. Let's go 10, nine. Shoulder blades up, up, up. Five, four, don't drop yet. Three, two, one. Bend the knees, twist towards the right. Both knees are bent. Come back towards the center, both legs extend. Bend both knees, twist left. Whew. Taking these slow, these are hard. And then back to your rotation. Let's continue with this alternating double leg bicycle situation. 
Getting as deep in that twist as you can. Enjoy the twist, that's the fun part. Last time right. And last time left. Rest it down. Whew. Okay, take a second here. Maybe reach your arms back behind you. Feel an elongation here through the body as you're sending fingertips towards the wall behind you, toes towards the wall in front of you. And I was gonna move on right to glutes from here, but I think we need a little stretch for the core. So flip right onto your stomach, or at least I do, so you're gonna get one too. Flip right onto your stomach, hands right underneath the shoulders, legs are hip width apart. Press pubic bone down into the floor. And you're gonna exhale, rise up through cobra as high as you can without dumping into your low back. Oh, and let your, your abs relax. Try to take a nice big inhale all the way down into your pelvic floor. Try to expand your belly button, take up more space. Allow all of that that was just really, really contracted to release. Keep those shoulders away from the ears. If you like, you can even add a little head circle here if the neck was feeling tense. Through all those curls. And then you can carefully descend. And we'll just take a little log roll onto our side. So now we'll get into our glutes. So you're gonna take it, I'm gonna scooch forward so I have some room to sweep my legs, so that my right arm is my pillow. If you prefer to use a block or a ball there, you can. And this top leg comes up to a hip height position. I'm reaching outward through this leg as I start to pulse up an inch and down an inch with control. I wanna feel my core really active here at this whole series. So. Nice side effect of starting with that pretty intense core sequence is that we're pretty connected and aware of what's happening here now. So lots of sensations happening, but I want you to still feel even more of that contraction as the leg is lifting so that core and glutes are working together. So this is not happening in the spine. Exhaling on our up, inhaling on our down, trying not to rush through the movement. Nice soft neck and shoulders. And if you need to drop your ankle weights, you can always get rid of those at any point if you feel like they're compromising your form. Let's go to, and one, keep that leg right at hip height. Give me a sweep forward without tucking your tailbone under, and then start to give me a sweep back without arching your back. So I usually like to put my hand on the floor for that sweep back so I don't end up jumping into my, my lumbar spine. But I wanna try and keep as light of a grip on the floor as possible. It's just in case I need it, rather than relying on it for dear life. Emergency break, not part of the movement. Squeeze through your butt as it sweeps back. So this is a lovely opening of the hips. Very welcome after that lengthy core sequence that we began with. Squeeze through your bottom. Oop, don't let your bottom knee sweep off the ground. So keep stabilizing as that bottom leg presses through the floor and try to visualize your leg growing an inch each time it comes to the center, because that's when we tend to want to hike into the hip. So while our leg is not physically growing an inch, it is trying to unstick from our hip socket. We'll take that for another two. Press it back, press it back, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Last time, it's going to come back through the center after you finish that sweep back through the middle, bending the knee in like you're sitting in a chair. Try to activate your butt on that press out. So try to make this as easy breezy and light on the way in. So we're using core and not hip flexors, but then push a heavy object, really press and brace through your glutes on the press out. Light, hard, or soft and intense, depending, you know, whatever words work for you to find that differentiation in the energy on the in and the out. It's subtle, but it really changes how we experience that movement and what muscles we're using and how, how deeply we're using them. Exhale on the press away. Try to get the leg just slightly behind you. So I'm going for a little bit of that hip extension, not quite as big as it was when I was doing my sweep, but it's a little bit behind my seat so that I'm just getting a little bonus hip mobility there. Why not? And we have two. 
And one, let's keep that knee bent on this next one. Fold it in. Now you're gonna extend the leg straight in front of you like you're kicking someone. Try to give me a little more lift from underneath your waistline. Leg is gonna stay straight. You start to sweep like we did earlier. Get it as far behind you as you can without disturbing your spine. And then bend the knee in back to that starting position. It's a bike ride. Pressing forward, big stretch back before drawing it in. Oblique exercise just as much as it is through glutes. So if you're not feeling obliques, give me more lift off the floor, give me more elongation of the leg and think about how you're breathing. Press, press, press. Ah. Let's go two more in this direction and then we're just gonna bike rides backwards. Bike ride backwards. And last time. Pause, when you've gotten to that furthest point back, just kick the leg straight front gently and fold it in like you're pedaling backwards. <sighs> Taking up just as much space with that pedaling action. <sighs> We're here for three. And two. And one, you're gonna fold that knee in, press it straight back to the beginning little pulses. So just a little end cap bookends of pulsing, longer through the leg. We wanna feel this outer hip feeling heavier and heavier for three, two, and one, gently set it down. Give it a little love tap, massage it out. All angles there, side hip, back hip, whatever your body needs. Then you're gonna press up, a little graceful, not so graceful transition here, onto the hands and knees. And we're gonna go into that same muscle group, but we're gonna go at, from, go at it from our side kneeling position. So I always like to start with a T here, trying to reach opposite sides of the room. Side bend like you're pouring out a pot of tea. This left hand is gonna go behind the head, so our head can press into our hand. We're working the same exact leg. We're still on that side. It's gonna feel really hard and really heavy. Soft through the right elbow, left leg floats up to hip height. It softens back down. Up to hip height and back down. This whole time, I'm long through my bottom supporting arm, but I'm not locked at that arm. So there's the softness in the elbow that allows my biceps and my triceps to support me instead of my wrist, elbow, and shoulder joint. This heel is right in line with my hip rather than all the way in front of me or all the way in back behind me directly as if I were standing in it. And keep that pressure of the head into the hand so that your neck isn't doing a little pecking action. We have two. And one, float that knee in, keep it parallel. So I wanna try and get my ankle and my knee at the same height and press it out again. It is okay if your leg is not all the way up here at hip height. If it's getting heavy and you need to bring it a little lower, just focus on trying to keep the knee and the ankle parallel at whatever height you're able to maintain. Of course, the higher we press it up, the more resistance we're gonna feel, but you work where you need to work. My right leg is gonna be a totally different sto story after a month in the boot, so I feel you. Last three. Two. And we're gonna bike right again. So knee comes in, slice it forward. Straight leg goes back behind you as much as you can. I'm gonna give myself a touch more space as much as you can before folding it in for a very awkward bike ride, using even more of our core at this time around. So we're really balancing as if we're in a side plank anytime we do a side kneeling glute work. Exhale, squeeze to the butt as you press it back. Give you two more in this direction. Check in with your neck. Press your head into your hand last time. That will take the pressure off of our neck. Reach it as far back as it goes, and then retrograde, leg goes forward. And on the pace back in. Squeeze through your butt here as it presses back behind you. Binding again that lightness and hardness. 
Pressing heavily, sweeping softly. Check in with your head, keep pressing into your hand. If your neck is still cranky, look down instead. We have two, lift taller off that right armpit. Last time. You're gonna keep that leg at hip height if you can. Little pulses, book ending that series. Last thing we do on this leg, we get a stretch after this. It's five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Take that left arm, reach it up and over. Feel the left side waistline, left upper back, whatever you need here. Whatever's tightest on your body is gonna talk the loudest. And then gently sit down on your bottom. Two options here. If you have really tight hips, you can do reclined laying on your back, figure four stretch, the kind you usually do. Or you can do it the seated version. Already I feel that just sitting in a crisscross position. But you can try and take your left ankle over the right thigh. And if you're like me, this knee is gonna be nowhere near that bottom leg at first, but as we breathe into it, it's gonna get heavier and heavier, whether that means it gets totally open today or not. Not important, as long as you try to unclench. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Let's shut our eyes. Think about growing up as tall as we can through the top of the head while rooting down through the sits bones and letting the pelvic floor drop and expand. So anytime we do this figure four stretch, whether it's this one or the laying down version, this is also a sneaky pelvic floor stretch, which is a good thing. We use our pelvic floor a lot, not just in the, the core focus movement, but all day long, especially if we're stressed out. So visualize that pelvic floor dropping into the mat and then spreading as wide as the mat so you can let it fully relax. And you'll notice that the more you're able to unclench your pelvic floor, the less you feel that tension in the hip. We're starting to melt into it a little bit more, finding more ease in the stretch. And then you can carefully unwind yourself Get yourself out of that. And then we're gonna go laying down on our stomach. Ah, no, I like not laying down on our stomach, coming on our hands and knees. Let me just check my little timer here. Coming onto your hands and knees. You're gonna take that same leg. So I'm on my left leg is gonna be reaching out. I'm gonna take right arm all the way out to a bird dog and then curl it in for a crunch. Right arm, left leg, reach it out. Curl it in for a crunch. Same movement. Last thing we do with this leg initiating the sweeping, but I'm strong keeping my weight over my center, over my pubic bone for three. No shrugging at the shoulders. Two. And one more time. Now this arm can either stay out in front of you or come down to the floor for more support, but that left leg just opens and closes, keying back in to those obliques. Inhale, widen, exhale, close. Last two. And one. Give yourself a little child's pose. Let's do it all again. Flip it down onto your left hip. Right arm, right arm, right leg is gonna extend. We're gonna go into our leg lift. So once again, Right leg just pulsing up an inch and down an inch. If I can get clipped in here. Up an inch and down an inch, keeping a supportive, supportive lift underneath that waistline, squeezing into this side butt. So because I have this foot injury, if you're watching this on replay and you're doing this class because you also have a foot injury, let your foot be really slack not holding a strict flex position or a strict pointed position. It's such a habit to break. I know I'm, I catch myself doing it all the time, but just letting it be relaxed so I can focus on what's happening here without disturbing my foot. <sighs> Stretching out through that leg, someone gently pulling your ankle that way. <sighs> sort of the theme of class today. 
Now let's keep that leg lifted at hip height. Give it a sweep front and give it a sweep back. Watch out for your plants. Sweeping front and back. Inhaling forward and exhaling backwards. Remembering that our sides are sisters, not twins, like our eyebrows. So even if you don't have an injury that you're working through or recovering from, very normal for you to feel like one side comes more naturally than the other, because we're not perfectly symmetrical. And the more we do this type of work, the more symmetrical we can get, so we even out those imbalances. But symmetry, perfect symmetry, is not humanly feasible. So we release the idea that that's what we're working for. We're working instead to create balance, to prevent injury, so that we can do more athletic and powerful movements, but not for this perfect idea. And if you can tell that this is the side that I struggle with, especially when it comes to maintaining my balance. Let's bring it in back to the center and just fold that knee in to a tabletop, heavy press out. Light glide in, heavy press out. Should feel almost a little shaky. You're pushing through space, really getting into that underbutt. Your gluteal fold, this right, this crease here, right underneath where your butt is, where it becomes your hamstring. I want it to contract before the movement even begins. So we're thinking about how we're moving before we even begin to move. Trying not to let that leg dip down below hip height. Telling myself as well. Exhale as we press. Inhale as we bend it back in. Let's take this for two. We're gonna go for our bike ride. And last time, the knee bends, we reach forward. Sweep straight back, find that stretch at the hip, fold it in. Sweeping forward, stretch, stretch, stretch. The stretching out is just as important as the front back action, the pedaling action. So I'm reaching as I'm sweeping so that I don't start to compress my low back. And yes, so we feel our right butt start to lay up a flame. Keep that balance and we'll go in the opposite direction. Keep it straight back behind you, and then just reverse it. Take that leg forward. Watch out for what's happening with your upper body. So I've been a little more slack on this side. I just caught myself doing a bit too much of that rotation. Try to keep this rectangle of hips and shoulders facing forward, regardless of what your legs are doing. My leg is moving within the hip socket, the pelvis itself, but it's not moving the pelvis. Squeeze it back. Two. We're gonna take that leg, I can hear my dog crying in the other room. Take that leg back to the center, little pulses. Book ending this first half of the sequence, we're getting back up to that side kneeling. Try to keep that hip reaching outward. It's three, two, one, let it melt down. A little relax. Make your way up. Quick transition up to your kneeling position once more. Make a big T, try to expand, take up as much space of your mat as you can. My fingertips are touching opposite sides of my mat before I tip it over. And I'm still in front of the mat here or on the very front edge of the mat, so I have space to sweep. We go into our lift from the floor for this first set. Oh, this leg feels so much heavier. Okay, we can do this. I can do this. Exhale as we lift. Inhale as we lower. Exhale on that lift up. Hug the rib cage away from the floor. Try to create this pocket, this arc here as we're in the side kneeling position. So I'm not sinking into this shoulder but lifting with intensity for two. Leg is gonna stay up here. Sweep it front, sweep it back. 
Keep your torso really stable. Exhale back. Now I prefer to keep this back foot untucked like so and hiding the ankle behind the knee. But if you feel really unstable, you can give it a little tuck of the toe. Or you can always come back and do this again laying on your side. The exact same variation that we just did if that's what your body needs. Head is pressing into that hand. This is our last sweep. Front and back. Now we bend the knee into the chest and press it out. Inhale, bend. Press it out. Almost done with this leg. After this, it's just our little bird dog crunches. Let your head push into your hand so your cervical spine comes into alignment with the rest of your back body. Two. One knee is bent, it kicks forward. Start to bike, take it back. Take it back, fold it in, reach it forward. Try to get that leg up to whatever your max height is and stretch it out as it's reaching. Whew. Little marathon glutes today. Last two, we're gonna reverse that bicycle and keep it back, sweep it straight ahead, fold it in, press it back. Open up at the chest, open up at the collarbones, send your hips and your shoulders forward, not towards the floor. Try to press your pelvis front. Huh. Lots of facial expressions today. Last two. And last one. We do have to do these little pulses. Up and up. Exhale up. Try not to let momentum do it. I know it's tempting. I'm trying to restrain myself from using momentum as well. Last two. One. Huh. Take that top arm. Just give yourself a nice big expansive stretch up and over. Trying to touch that opposite wall. Trying to puff up that right rib cage before setting it down. Either flip onto your back for your figure four like we did before, or set yourself up for the seated variation of the stretch. Honestly, even sitting in crisscross is a stretch for me today. So do whatever you need to do. Flex at that top foot. If you don't have a foot injury, I'm gonna just let mine be slack. I'm letting gravity do its thing here. I do want to be right on top of my sits bones to so try to pull your tush out from underneath of you so you're right on top of your bony landmarks or ischial tuberosity. And then again, we're just going to let our eyes shut and melt into the stretch. Slow your breathing a bit if you were clenching and holding your breath through that last bit of the sequence for those pulses. I know I was. Exhaling to feel the abs gently lift and hug inward. Inhaling to feel heavier through the floorboards, letting your pelvic floor completely go. Think about lifting the ears up away from the shoulders. And then you'll carefully unwind, make your way onto your all fours position. We're going to use that same leg that we were just working. So I have my right leg moving for that, which means I'm going to take my left arm for our oppositional bird dog reach and crunch it in. Inhale, elongation, exhale, contraction in. Looking in at the belly button as you crunch, but also hugging and lifting through the pelvic floor as you crunch. We have three, two, one. Extend it all the way out. Option put this left hand on the ground, otherwise, right leg opens and squeezes shut. Opens and squeezes shut. Can you get your leg a little higher without arching your back? Present, presentation of those collarbones spiraling forward of your right bicep. Last two. Last one, gently set it down. Hands come underneath your shoulders. You can walk it out to either kneeling plank 
or if going on your feet works for you today, you can come into a straight leg plank if you like, or it's gonna hold. Squeezing into the glutes, trying to drag the hands back towards the knees. So even if you're here in this kneeling plank, I want it to feel a little shaky because we're isometrically contracting, isometrically contracting our abdominals with this dragging action. <sighs> Pulling the shoulder blades gently away from the ears, looking at the front of your mat, really squeezing and activating through your glutes and pressing away from the ground at the same time, just for another 10. Nine, eight, seven, Six, can you see me shaking? Five, four, can you feel yourself shaking? Three, two, growing taller, pressing through your knuckles. Last one, butt goes back, final child's pose. Head drops to the floor. Arms can either stay active, trying to spread and reach forward, or if your body needs just a little bit more restorative, chill, you can make it passive and sort of just collapse into the floor here. Either way, focus on breathing here through the back ribs, puffing up that upper back, and relaxing out of it. Starting from the base of your spine, beginning to stack yourself back up to vertical, coming all the way up. A few shoulder rolls back to open up the chest again, and voila, that is your 30-ish minute uh, body weight or optional ankle weight, full body class, but definitely emphasis on the low body. So if you're watching on replay, I'd love to answer any of your questions in the comments below. If you're here with me live, you can ask me, and I'll see you next time.